So you finally have decided to give Blizzard Entertainment another chance. You've made it to the Dragon Isles, and you're making your way through WoW's newest expansion. The only problem is, you feel like a complete noob, lost, confused, and struggling to keep up with everybody else, whether that be in leveling or in endgame. Well, what if I told you that I have a list of tips and tricks to help you, yeah you, watching this, become the best player possible in Dragonflight, all of which are easy and simple to follow. From getting your Dragon Scale Expedition to max with with ease to flexing on your guildies with your newfound wealth discovered on the Dragon Isles, these are a handful of tricks and hints to get you started on a quick road to success in Dragonflight. Starting with number one, get your ass enchanted. Yeah, you heard that right. We're starting this list off by talking about enchanting. Did you know that there are a ton of new enchants in Dragonflight? I, I mean like a lot of enchants. This expansion is amazing in this regard. New enchants for your chest, your cloak, bracers, boots, rings, weapons, whatever you want. Now you might be sitting there wondering, okay, yeah, there's a lot of new enchants. I can enchant my gear, but why do I care? Why do I care about enchants? I'm not going to waste my hard-earned gold on a small stat boost. I'm not some sweaty streamer with all the gold he wants from his drooling fans. Man, dude, come on. Well, let me ask you this. Do you care about speed? Do you care about going fast like your hero Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, with Enchants, you can increase your speed by up to 12%. You can even decrease the damage you take by falling, increase your mounted speed, or reduce your hearthstone cooldown. Sounds to me like it's time to sell your soul to your nearest warlock for some of those sweet, sweet Enchants, especially if you're trying to level through the Dragon Isles, get through it quickly, speed boost, less fall damage, more mounted speed, all this stuff is a huge help with getting to max level as quick as possible so that you can jump into endgame. So that's why we made this number one. But now let's move on to number two, climbing mountains. Are you someone that watched that free solo documentary with that skinny guy climbing out in Yosemite and you're like, man, I really want to climb some rocks one day, but you're just too fat like me. Well, you know what? You can take part in the glory of ascending a 500 foot cliff in the great outdoors with your bros in World of Warcraft. Not actually outside, because that would be ridiculous. What are you nuts? You're going to climb an actual real mountain? Real life doesn't even have good graphics. Anyway, the point is, once you reach level six in the Dragon Scale Expedition Renown, you will unlock the epic feature of climbing rocks. And now before you think climbing rocks is stupid, just hear me out. At level 6 Renown, you'll also get your Expedition Supply Kit, where you can upgrade various skills with your Expedition Adventures, one of which being your Grip Strength for climbing. Now at level 7 of your Renown, you're going to unlock the second part of the mountaineering system, and that's Mountain Flags. Now these flags are found on the high peaks across the Dragon Isles, and planting them will give you a ton of reputation with the Dragon Scale Expedition. In Total, you'll be able to get two whole renowned levels from just getting to the tops of 20 mountains around the islands. You'll also get a ton of new world quests around the isles to climb some cliffs. This feature has been a ton of fun. Get to level six as fast as possible and go out and start climbing every single mountain that you can find. It's one of the fastest ways to get renowned. Go and do it. And the best part about this system is that people love it. Just look at some of these comments from players talking about mountain climbing. The only con would simply just be Shadow Steps here saying, I sure wish I could do this more than twice every 3.5 days. Just make sure you climb some mountains in Dragonflight, okay? Very important tip. Stay up to date on this once you hit the appropriate renown level. Let's talk about number three, upgrading your gear. A lot of you guys are probably like me. You're a big fan of Classic WoW, or maybe you played Classic and you might be able to relate to this point is, do you miss the armor kits, sharpening stones, and the little upgrades you could give yourself as you played the game? Well, after years of neglect, all of those things are relevant again. If you head on down to the local auction house, or you go beat up your leather worker friend, you can get some armor kits for your pants. Go beat up your local blacksmith to get some sharpening stones for your weapons. Man, that increases your attack damage a lot. I love these things. Or go visit your local tailor to get spell threads for your epic, cool, awesome-looking mage. Mage is such an awesome class, unlike warlocks, especially warlocks that wear red robes. Those guys are losers. Anyway, the point is, do not neglect these little buffs to your character, whether it be your weapons or your armor that you can get from professions, because it's a great way to minimize damage on your character if you're a tank, for example, or to bust out a lot more DPS if you're a warrior like me and you're doing Bladestorm through a ton of mobs and mythics. And while you're at it, don't forget to socket your gear with gems for those juicy extra little stat bonuses. These little bonuses are going to give you that old school RPG feeling of that small but euphoric boost. It's great. Don't neglect it. 
let's move on to number four, gambling simulator. Here's a new one that I just recently learned about. Do you like chance by chance? Do you like to tempt the fates, your luck? Or do you like to seduce Lady Fortune herself? Do the words addictive personality apply to you? Well, then I only have one thing to say. Pick a card from the Faded Fortune deck. That's right, everybody. If World of Warcraft was not already a gambling simulator, it sure is now with the new Dragonflight Faded Fortune cards. You heard about this? Well, get ready. Here we go. Players with inscription are now able to make these cards and sell them on the auction house. But what do they do, you might be wondering? Let me explain. When you flip one of these cards, it will transform into a fortune card worth various amounts of gold. From nearly one measly gold to the rarest card, 25,000 gold. Yeah! They also have cute little fortunes written on them, and scribes can turn these into fortune cookies as well. So the question is, you ready to test your luck? Well, then jump into this system and see if you can make some gold. Maybe finally you'll be able to afford that damn brontosaurus mount that was available back in BFA. I myself, I have wasted more money than I care to admit on these cards, and at this point, it feels like it's just a way for Blizzard to delete gold from the economy, <laughs> but it's been fun, all right? It's a great way to get some gold if you're feeling dangerous. So let's talk about number five, our final point. Get yourself some PvP gear. This is a tip that I learned recently because speaking for myself, I got my character through a ton of mythics. I got some gear. I'm a bit of an ultaholic and I started leveling some alts in this expansion. And the thing is, there's probably a lot of you guys out there like me who maybe you're not too focused on one character. You just kind of want to level up a lot of characters and have a big collection of characters at level 70. But you're probably sitting there wondering, how am I going to gear these guys up really fast? Or maybe you just hate raiding or perhaps you just want to get some temporary gear while while you wait for those sexy best in slot pants to drop well if you fall into any of these categories an altaholic someone that doesn't like raiding whatever the pvp gear system in this game is for you by doing world pvp quests you will get a currency in dragonflight called bloody tokens which you can then use to buy an entire set of gear complete with set bonuses that will give you buffs and utilities in pvp now i know what you're thinking you're like all right pvp P gear whatever what's the big deal let me tell you something what makes this gear so good is that every week you can complete a quest to upgrade one piece of your pvp gear to item level 385 which is just a little less than normal mode raid gear so this is a great way to fill the gaps in your gear you can actually hear me talk a bit more about world pvp gear in our latest video the one that's being featured on your screen right now but we haven't made a dedicated world pvp video yet and that's something that i've seen a lot of comments from you guys where you're saying hey we need to talk more about world pvp in the future of world of warcraft but point is get yourself some pvp gear get yourself some bloody tokens this is a great way to just catch up get some fast item level gear it's awesome so it's a fun system and if you're not somebody that you are a pvp -er, it's a great way to get some decent gear while getting a little bit of pvp action in your day but not too much to the point that it's annoying if you're more of a dedicated raider or pve player so in conclusion my friends what tips and tricks have you picked up on in dragonflight let us know in the comments section below because i know there's a lot more than these five let's be real and we also tend to take comments from our videos to be featured in our next video so maybe you're some big dick mythic raider who hated this video and you already knew everything about it in which case leave a comment saying how much you hate us and let us know some tips and advice from your perspective Either way, be sure to watch that video linked on your screen right now. I appreciate it, guys, and thanks for watching.